Most people try to treat their dry lips using lip balm, drinking water, or using an at-home sugar scrub if they spend too long on TikTok. But those are the wrong things to do, and if you really understood what causes chap lips, you'd understand why some of them actually make the problem worse. I'm Dr. Sayed, a board-certified dermatologist from New York. On this channel, I make scientific, unsponsored skincare videos, and by the end of this one, you'll understand exactly what's causing your dry lips and how to treat them. And the reason I'm making this video right now is because last week I got chap lips myself and then it became personal to me. So I'll also tell you about my own journey through this video too. Let's move on to explaining the different types of dry lips. And yes, there are more than one type. I've had people come into my clinic with lips that look like this, 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 and this, and all four of them have completely different causes. And if you don't understand your exact type of crusted lips, then the cycle is gonna repeat itself over and over again. The medical term for dry, irritated lips is chelitis, which means inflammation of the lips. And yes, that's pronounced chelitis and not chillitis, which is the medical term for spending a whole weekend doing nothing but chilling. I'm actually a chronic chillitis sufferer myself. Now, the most common cause of chelitis is actually dry air. When the weather is cold, and especially when the heating systems come on in your house, the air moisture levels go down dramatically. This means that moisture evaporates more rapidly from the skin in your lips into the atmosphere. Another factor that makes this worse in winter months is that we're all getting sick much more often, and that leads to blocked noses. Blocked nasi, blocked noses apostrophe. And what happens when you get a blocked nose is that you end up breathing through your mouth much more often, and that constant airflow over your lips makes the drying and crusting even worse. But there are other triggers for dry lips besides just the environment and this can include allergies. Studies have shown that these ingredients around me right now are the most common triggers when it comes to lip allergens, but there are more possibilities than these. The ironic thing is a bunch of lip care products, such as lip balms, actually contain these ingredients, and so you might be using them to help with dry lips and actually making the problem worse. Let's take Burt's Bees as an example, and their main ingredient is beeswax, which as you can see is a potential allergen. And aside from that, they've also added peppermint oil, which yes, can feel tingly and refreshing, but in the long term, it can also be irritating to the thin skin on your lips. I'm now very concerned that they're gonna send a swarm of trained bees after me as retaliation for this video, but these are the risks I take for my audience. Dry lips can also be caused by eczema, bacterial, viral, and fungal infections, and also chronic sun damage, and it's really important to identify that last one because you might think you have dried lips, but actually you've got skin cancer on your lips. I'm gonna help you figure out what type of lip dryness you have next in the video, but you may have noticed that I missed dehydration as a cause of lip dryness, and that was intentional. The reason for that is dehydration is not the cause of most people's lip dryness, even though it's a common misconception. In most people with dry lips, they are not thirsty, they're not feeling dizzy when they stand up because of a low blood volume, they're peeing regularly, and their pee is nice and clear, which means that their body is well hydrated. And the reason I point this out is because a lot of people think drinking water is a quick fix for dry lips, and I wanna point out that in most cases, that is simply not true. So how do you know which type of dry lips you have? I'm gonna ask you a set of questions as if you in my clinic and by the end of it you should have a good sense of what you might have and then we'll discuss some specific treatments for each one so let's start from the top you have dry lips number one do you have a history of eczema you would probably know about this because you'd have it for years this wouldn't be the first episode on your lips and you probably have eczema on other parts of your body number two are you above the age of 40 or 50 and is your lip crusting mainly on the bottom lip and not the top lip if that's the case, you may have something called actinic chelitis, which is lip crusting and inflammation from chronic sun damage. In these cases, the lip crusting doesn't tend to come and go. It just comes in one area and it stays there, slowly getting bigger at times. The reason it's on the bottom lip more than the top lip is because UV rays come from the sun above and they tend to hit directly at bottom lip, whereas the top lip is kind of protected from it. If this sounds like you, then you should see a dermatologist as soon as possible because that crusty area on your bottom lip might also be a skin cancer caused by the chronic sun damage. Otherwise, let's move on to question number three. Does your lip crusting also have some pus associated with it or a type of golden crust? If that's the case, then you may have a bacterial infection called impetigo. And in these cases, it tends to be more of a one-off rather than a coming and going situation. Number four, do you have a history of cold sores and this episode of crusty lip tends to come and go maybe every couple of months or years? In that case, it could be caused by herpes virus. Before each episode of lip herpes, you tend to experience a bit of tingling or pain, and then you'll notice some small bubbles on the surface of the skin. These tend to be clustered together, and their edges look a little bit like a cartoon cloud, or in dermatology, we call that a scalloped border. 
Number five, are you using any new products that might be touching your lips and therefore causing an allergic driver for your key lighters? So this could be direct products like lip balms, lip scrubs, lipsticks. It might be creams that you're applying to your overall face and some of it's getting on your lips. Or it might even be nail products where it's adhesives or fake nails. And then when you're pressing them against your lips, the allergy is showing there. Number six, do you have cracked lips only in the corners? And if you do, this is something known as angular chelitis because it only happens at the angles of the mouth. In these cases, it's usually saliva buildup that's causing most of the problems in the corner of the mouth. And then sometimes some fungal spores can complicate that picture. Or number seven, do you mainly get dry lips in the winter months? And the answer to all of those other questions was no. In that case, your dry lips are just environmentally triggered, and this is the most common scenario. In my case, I was a part of that last group. I recently had a cold, so my nose is blocked, and my New York apartment has really dry air. So now that we have a really clear understanding of what's causing our dry lips, let's move on to treatment. And for this, I have three suggestions. One ointment, one device, and one rule. Number one, the ointment. And the priority here is what product is gonna help us lock in the most amount of moisture into our lips. And for that, there is nothing better than plain old Vaseline. This is way better than any other lip balm in my opinion because people very rarely have allergies to Vaseline, so there's no way you're making it worse. Vaseline has the highest occlusion factor, meaning it creates the best barrier of anything that we have in skincare. And number three, Vaseline is really easy to spread and apply gently, whereas sometimes lip balms are a little bit stiff and so they apply a lot of lateral pressure on areas that are already inflamed. So there's no need to buy any other expensive lip products. Vaseline is all you need, but if you do want some alternatives, CeraVe Healing Ointment and Aquaphor Ointment are also great options. In my case, I used Aquaphor because I was already using that for my baby's diaper cream and so it was multifunctional. But whatever you end up picking, make sure you use it at least two to three times per day and ideally five to six times per day if you can. But the most important time by far to put it on is last thing at night before you go to sleep. And that's because at night we might be subconsciously mouth breathing with a blocked nose for seven, eight hours. And putting on that Vaseline before bed will make sure you don't wake up with dry, cracked, painful lips. Onto the one device I recommend to help with chapped lips. And this is, of course, a humidifier. They add more moisture to the air, meaning that less leaves your lips. And they can make a huge difference for just $20 to $50 off Amazon. Buy one, use one, and make sure you clean it often, otherwise you will get fungal spores. And now let's move on to my one rule, which is stop licking your lips. The thought process goes something like this. Oh my God, my lips are so dry. Wait a minute, I have a wet tongue with saliva that I can use to fix it. Oh my God, the solution is right there. I am an evolutionary masterpiece. But even though that feels like it helps in the short term, saliva actually makes the problem way worse. And that's because it contains digestive enzymes that break down the skin further. Saliva is actually the reason why small babies end up getting rashes in their neck folds because the drool goes down there, it accumulates, and then it causes skin breakdown. In that same way, your saliva will cause your lips to break down. And so try to avoid doing it as much as possible. There's actually a whole condition called lip lickers dermatitis because this behavior becomes such a habit for people, they don't even realize they're doing it. I'll sometimes ask my patients in clinic, do you ever lick your lips? And they will literally say, hmm, let me think. No. So genuinely get a friend or your wife, for example, to keep an eye on you. And every time they catch you licking your lips, you got to give them a dollar. You'll either stop licking your lips or you'll have a very happy friend or wife, both of which are great outcomes. For 95% of you, those instructions above are going to fix your lips completely within one to two weeks. In my case, I use Aquaphor four to five times a day. I use my humidifier and I stop licking my lips. And within one week, my lips are way, way better. And when this works for you, please leave a comment below saying this works so that other people know I'm not lying. But in those 5% of cases, you may need to escalate treatment by adding an anti-inflammatory cream, something like a tacrolimus ointment, which your dermatologist can prescribe for you. This will often be enough to finish off any remaining inflammation and can make a huge difference. If it's not getting better even with all of that, your dermatologist will likely take a swab culture to try and figure out is there a bacterial, viral, or fungal component and if there is, they'll give you the appropriate creams or tablets as needed to treat those infections. And if they decide there's no infection and they're more concerned for an allergy, at that point they will do patch testing to help identify what exactly you might be sensitive to. And finally, if you have actinic chelitis, which is that sun damage of your lower lip, your dermatologist might decide that you need to have that frozen using some liquid nitrogen to destroy the precancerous or cancerous cells, or they may decide to give you a prescription cream like imiquimod or fluorouracil. 
But you'll notice one thing I didn't mention as a treatment here, and that is lip scrubs. Now that you know the basics behind dry lips, you can probably understand for yourself why these are a bad idea. The whole problem is that your lip skin is no longer working effectively as a barrier. So imagine that you have a leaky and cracked brick wall which is no longer working. What you do with a lip scrub is that you come and you destroy the rest of that wall thinking that you've done something useful. That's clearly not a good idea because even if it temporarily looks and feels smoother, you haven't solved the underlying problem, you've actually made it worse and so the cycle is going to continue. So instead of breaking down what's left of that wall, you should instead focus on building that wall. Hmm, build that wall. She sounds like a really catchy slogan. I might try and make that a thing. I think people love it. That's it guys, that is everything about chap lips. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.